Which drone is best, the Skydio R2 or the Mavic 2 Pro? Today I'm going to attempt to answer that question for you by breaking down the differences between these two drones so that you can decide which one of these two great drones might best fit your needs. There's going to be a lot of footage from both of these drones in this video. Hope you're doing well. My name is Jake Sloan and I make content here on YouTube for solo creators, people like me who are out there shooting by themselves a lot, especially people who are on the go and mobile quite a bit. And so I do reviews of equipment that makes the process easier. I do tips and tutorials on how to use that equipment and tips and tutorials on how to take your photography and your videography up to the next level so that you can get out there and get seen and heard. Just in case you're wondering, I bought both these drones. Neither of these were sent to me. And so this is my very unbiased opinion about the strengths and weaknesses of each one of these drones because drones are something that I use pretty much in every shoot that I go and do in one way or another. Let's start out by talking about the strengths of each one of these drones. Even though they are clearly aimed at different segments of the market, one is super autonomous, whereas the other is more of a excellent drone with some intelligent things, but is built and meant to be more flown by you and with you making the main decisions. Starting off with the Mavic 2 Pro, this drone has been in my bag since it was released a year and a half ago, every single day on every trip I've gone on and has been fantastic. This drone will fly for up to 30 minutes is what DJI says, but let's be honest, 24 to maybe 25 minutes is more accurate. This drone, rather than being rated to 32 degrees or zero Celsius, will and is rated to go down to minus 10, which is fantastic because that means it can handle colder weather. Another thing that's amazing about this drone is the range and the signal link quality. I have never had dropouts with this thing, even when I've been flying in dense forests or in ice caves. The connection to this drone has always remained rock solid and the downlink quality for the video feed has been incredible. Something else that made this drone a great drone for me for the last year and a half is the fact that it is so compact and foldable, which means you can fit it into a camera bag slot that is relatively small, relatively tiny, because it folds down to a really small compact size. And at about two pounds of weight with a battery, it's really not that heavy and so it makes it one of the best portable drones on the market. Not to mention the fact that this thing gets great image quality because it has a one inch sensor, which is the largest sensor currently available on a consumer drone. And so that's fantastic because it works better at low light, but it also captures great still images that are 20 megapixels each. And then being the fact that it has a variable aperture makes it really versatile in a lot more situations. One of the other things that's fantastic about the Mavic 2 Pro is the fact that it has obstacle avoidance from the front, the rear, the top, the bottom, and the sides, although the side obstacle avoidance is only active during intelligent flight modes. But the obstacle avoidance from the front and the rear and the top and the bottom is actually very good. And one of the great things too is that DJI has done a phenomenal job of implementing intelligent flight modes and active track, which means the drone intelligently finds you, you can tap on yourself and have it track you automatically from a few different flight modes. And then we come to the controller of the Mavic 2 Pro. Not only does it fold down to be a very compact size, but it also features this screen, which is excellent because it gives you all kinds of data about where your drone is, which direction it's flying, how fast it's flying, how high it's flying what the RPMs of the motor are, and what the status of your battery is. When you plug in a phone, of course, you can see out of the camera of the drone, which is amazing, and the remote controller will now charge your phone while you're flying is amazing for somebody like me who's out shooting in the winter in the cold a lot, which is not good for phones because they don't like cold and their batteries die insanely fast. On to the Skydio R2. I've been playing with this drone for the last few days, and I have to say, overall, I'm really impressed. The potential and what this drone is capable of is amazing. So let's talk about some of the strengths of this drone. First off, this thing has the most intelligent obstacle avoidance flight system of any drone on the market, absolutely, period, bar none. It is amazing. Other strength that I was really surprised at is the image quality. The video quality coming out of this camera is excellent. And actually, I think it's pretty much on par with the Mavic 2 Pro, which is surprising considering that 
it doesn't have a one inch sensor, but it does get really, really good image quality and you can go up to 4K 60. The still photos are good and you can shoot raw still photos, but they're limited to about 15 megapixels. And this drone is actually a little bit lighter than the Mavic 2 Pro. It comes in at about one pound, 12 ounces. So that's pretty light. Another great thing about this drone is the battery lines up, locks in via magnets. Another strength about this drone is that it charges via USB-C. I would recommend you get the double battery charger from Skydio because otherwise your drone is locked up every time you wanna charge a battery. The Skydio R2 boasts about 23 minutes of flight time and honestly, I've been getting pretty consistently 20, 21 minutes, 22 minutes if I really push it to the last few percent. Probably the biggest strength of this drone is the fact that it is super smart and super autonomous and so for any Anybody out creating content of themselves by themselves like I do a lot this thing is fantastic and probably a game changer is the fact that you can turn this thing on take it off it will find you and then start following you and then if you pair it with something like the beacon or the remote controller you can get amazing footage just like any other drone and of course you can fly up to about 36 miles an hour I haven't really pushed that or seen how fast this thing will go but I know it does fly fast especially when it knows that there's no obstacles around it. It slows way down when there are close, tight obstacles around it because it's having to judge and calculate a safe flight plan through obstacles. Another fantastic thing about this drone is how much movement and freedom of movement there is for the gimbal. It will tip up a lot, much further than the Mavic 2 Pro and give you an absolutely unobstructed view no matter what the attitude of the drone is when you're flying. And then we come to the remote. Now this is a rebranded Parrot Anafi remote and it works okay. You turn it on by opening it up and it will link to the drone once you've linked it. But there is no screen or anything to give you any information other than that you have to have your mobile device plugged in. But they also developed this beacon, which is fantastic because you pair this with your phone and then this talks to the, the drone itself. And with this, it will follow you whether it can see you or not. And that's really, really exciting. Plus, you can trigger off a few different things with this particular remote and not have to break out a remote and pull your mobile device, plug everything in, turn it on, get it synced up. And uh, this I think is my favorite thing and probably the one thing I would highly recommend you get with the drone. The remote, eh, I can take it or leave it, but this is an absolutely, uh, to me, it's a necessity. It's excellent. Now that we've talked about all the amazing parts of the Mavic 2 Pro, let's talk about um, the not so amazing parts. And one is the fact that this is bound by DJI's geofencing system. Now, I don't think that the geofencing system is bad. I think it's a great idea. I just think that a lot of times, in many cases, it's not implemented correctly, depending on where you are. Another downside is cost. This drone can cost you up to around $1,800, depending on which remote controller you get. It will come with one battery, two extra props, the remote, and the drone. Now, you can save a little bit by going with the regular controller, not the smart controller which is I use the regular controller and it's been fantastic another downside for me is that especially in the winter when the sun angle of the sun is very low over the horizon a lot because I'm so far north I will get a lot of false positives with the obstacle sensing and another thing is with the smart tracking features I have found them many times to be fairly inconsistent, especially for whatever reason when I'm using active track. A lot of times I find that the drone is, has problems following me closely. And I think probably my last downside for this drone is that obstacle avoidance is great, but it's not something I've ever trusted 100% because I have seen it fly toward very small branches other objects and not necessarily detect them. And I know a lot of people think that because it has side obstacle avoidance that it has 360 degree protection, it doesn't. It only uses the side obstacle avoidance when it's operating in the DJI pre-programmed intelligent flight modes. One other downside for me, and it's a difference between the Skydio 2, is that the DJI batteries, you have to use a DJI charger and so, I have to make sure that I carry with me enough fully charged batteries to be able to do the jobs that I need to do when I'm out and about. Let's talk about the downsides because there are a few. One is that it is not as compact and foldable and as portable as the Mavic 2 Pro because it does not fold down. Now I know why it doesn't fold down is these cameras all have to be perfectly calibrated in order for the algorithms and the obstacle avoidance to really work. But on the lines of obstacle avoidance is this will not fly in low light. It will 
will not take off no matter what because it doesn't have enough information through the through the obstacle avoidance sensors to be able to calculate where obstacles are. And on that vein, the low light footage from this is not going to be as good as the Mavic 2 Pro because it has a smaller sensor and you can't take off with it in low light anyway. So sun sets, sun rises, you're not gonna be able to capture them using this drone. Another downside is the fact that you really do only get 20, 21, maybe 22 minutes of flight time before it will need to land. And that is a little bit of a downside. If you've paired it with the remote control and you're flying long, further distances away, then it will land wherever it is. And when it's landing, there's no obstacle avoidance in operation, which means it just goes down and sets down on whatever it's over. So you have to be aware of where the drone is, how far away it is, how much battery you have, and how much you need to get back. And that brings me to one of the bigger downsides, which isn't really related to the drone itself because the drone itself is great. It's the remote. I'm most disappointed in. And the reason for that is that the signal strength is not nearly as strong as I would like it to be. The antennas are built in here, but I was losing signal or getting image breakup for the image feed to my phone when flying behind buildings that were a few hundred feet away. Uh, the fact that you don't have any te telemetry data on your phone or on the remote, you don't really know which way your drone's facing, how fast it's going, how far away it is from where it took off. Honestly, all the shots that you're gonna wanna get with this drone, you're gonna be fairly close by. And so if you want more manual control, it's great. You, you can use this. It's just, you need to buy this separately from the drone. And then that brings me to probably one of my biggest gripes is I like a lot of manual control over my shots and over my flight path and uh, what I'm doing with the gimbal and the camera while I'm doing that. The Skydio app doesn't give you a lot of options for what you wanna do. Now there's plenty of options there to get great footage and to get great photos. I'm not saying that there aren't, but the fact that when you're flying it either with the remote or with the beacon it feels more like you're having a conversation with ai about the direction it's going to go the direction it's going to face and i wish there was a way to tighten up some of those controls so that you had more fine-tuned control over it but again i think a lot of that stuff is things that can be added to the app and to the firmware with an update down the road and i'm sure some of these things will be addressed as skydio goes on because they've already been very actively listening to the users that have these units and they have been giving them feedback. So for direct comparison, they are, uh, this is slightly smaller when this is unfolded, but not by much. It is definitely a lot thinner, although with the battery on there, it's not that much thinner. And a small gripe, minor downside, is that you have to be careful of the six camera lenses because they need to be clean in order for it to see obstacles well and operate well. Obviously, this is not something you can just throw in your backpack as it is. You need to keep it in the case it came with. This is cheaper, this is more expensive. This gets good image quality, this gets great image quality. This has some manual control that's augmented by the AI built inside, which is phenomenal. This has a lot of manual control or almost complete manual control, except for the geofencing. And uh, you can disable all of the AI if you want to. This has really good intelligent flight modes and intelligent tracking with some decent manual flight control. This has good intelligent flight modes, good object tracking, and very good manual flight modes. This is the winner for range. This is the winner for intelligence. I've listed a link in the description that will take you to my Google Drive where I put the raw video and the raw photos from this video and a few others. And you can download them for yourself to decide which drone is gonna best fit your needs. And I think that's really what it comes down to is if you want a drone that is gonna film you better than anything else, the Skydio R2 is gonna be great if you're doing things in decent lighting and in daylight. If you want a drone that gives you tons of manual control and probably the strongest, best control system on the market, aside from the geofencing, then the Mavic 2 Pro is gonna be the drone for you. I put together a playlist here about using drones to improve your videography and your photography, how to fly them in winter and stuff like that. You can click there, I'll see you in one of those videos. As always, you can reach out to me on Instagram, Twitter, or ask questions in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Cheers.